Hey y'all, uh, wanted to start doing some more videos using SH5. I uh, absolutely love this sim, played it for quite a while. It's actually the reason I bought my desktop computer back in 2011, uh, which means I definitely need to upgrade my system. But anyway, I can run SH5 great, I can run Wolfpack great. Uh, U-Boat I can run fine, so it's working well for me uh, thus far. But I've uh, been playing a lot of SH5 lately, it's just got a lot lot going for it with TWOS super mod, so I uh, just created this uh, single ship mission just to kind of demonstrate uh, kind of how I go about uh, executing an attack for all of you SH5 players out there that want to emulate uh, historical tactics and procedures, right? So I'm kind of adamant in my own play style anyway of doing things uh, how I understand them to have been done in reality. That's just from reading uh, the, the historical KTVs, so the war, the war diaries that were kept on on the boats, how these, how things were described in there. So uh, you can somewhat see out there. I've got, I've got a, a ship spotted there. The mast tips are coming out right now. Uh, uh, forgive me if you can't see that video, but you try hard to see it. You, uh, you, you may be able to see there are some mast tips. It's part of a funnel poking up right now. It's dead ahead there. So uh, what I'm going to do first step, I've, I'm at 12 knots right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn 90 degrees. Sort of put him on my 270 or thereabouts. I'll make liberal use of the uh, time compression here just because uh, so you don't have to sit there and wait, uh, wait for me to do things. So this procedure here is what was known as Ausdampfen. So typically what these guys would do on the surface upon sighting a ship was turn they thought was roughly parallel and they would watch the bearing change and they would also watch the size of the masts to see if uh, if a the ship was coming closer because the masts were getting larger or smaller or B uh, to see if uh, the bearing was moving forward or backward which would indicate uh, a difference in speed between your boat and the enemy ship so in this case uh, and I've got no stabilized view on uh, so it makes the up and down a little extreme so forgive me for that as well, but suffice it to say, the mast tips are there, and what I'm doing right now is I'm watching that funnel, and I'm watching those masts, and I'm seeing, I'm watching what they're doing in relation to me. So, uh, in this case, my course is 090, okay? Um, I've got my speed set to 12 knots, which is the historical setting for half speed ahead. And now I'm just going to TC a little bit and watch what he does. Okay, I can clearly see the bearing is falling back. A little bit, so I'm going to bump my speed down to 10 knots, and I'm going to watch from there. All right, and then I'm I'm also going to be watching to see whether the masts grow or shrink. So I'm always keeping in my mind's eye what that what that looks like at the moment, and I'm watching to see how it changes. All the while trying to get the bearing to not change. So the, the bearing is clearly still moving backwards. So we haven't quite stabilized yet on 10 knots. Uh, there we go, we're stable on 10 knots, so let's watch the bearing. Still moving backwards. So now the next setting I'm going to set is 7 knots, which would be the historical setting for for um, uh, dead slow. Okay, so we're going to set 7 knots and we'll see how that does for us. Alright, in the meantime, what does it look like? It's, it looks like, if anything, the masts have actually shrunk a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go 20 degrees to port. I'm going to come to a course of, of, um, of uh, 0, 0.7.0 0, and I'm going to watch to see what the masks do. Okay, there we go. Alright, back on eyes on him. And again we'll watch the bearing change. Now we're pretty much on 7 knots. The bearing is not changing much, so the speed is going to be, we know the speed is going to be around 7 knots. I can tell already by the dispersion of those masts there in the funnel that we're pretty much on a parallel course. Uh, if you're pretty much on a parallel course, your speed estimate, uh, if it, assuming the bearing is constant, is going to be pretty exact. But we want to try to determine what the course is exactly, and so we're going to... We're going to try to continue to get the get the course. If you didn't want to do this, 
and tr try to get the course. You can just simply get a constant bearing and uh, uh, and then run around to the front and figure out what the course actually was, which we're going to do that anyway. But for these purposes, we're going to try to get the course. All right, so the bearing is actually moving forward ever so slightly. And we're on course 0771. So I'm going to keep watching and see what that what those masts do. Okay, now the masts are actually growing again. I can even see some I can even see the flag now. The flag has come over the horizon. So now I'm going to go I'm going to split the difference, okay? I'm going to go I I went 20 to port. I'm going to go 10 to starboard. I'm going to come to 080 or I don't know 081. There we go. Okay. So now we should have a pretty close course match because we, when we were at 090, the masts were shrinking. When we were at 070, the masts were coming back into view again. So now we split the difference, and hopefully that should give us a stable reference point. So now I, it might be hard for you to see, but the flag is actually above the horizon now. So I'm going to watch that flag and see how it does, see if it disappears or if it, uh, or if it um, comes further out. So. Actually, the speed is spot on. So seven knots, we can bank on. Excuse me. We can bank on that being his speed. I'm orienting on the funnel, and that's not moving at all. So let's just watch that flag and see. Now, the flag is staying about the same size as well. So I think we've matched their course of speed at, at a course of 080 and uh, a speed of... Uh, seven knots. Okay, so I'm going to note those down, but what I'm also going to do at this point is I'm going to go into the map and uh, I am going to, first of all, have my navigator start plotting um, every five minutes. Okay, that's the first thing. And then uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little what they call vector analysis. So this is, I'm going to set this up on the map just in case, uh, in case the course is actually different than what I think it is. Because if you think about it, I have achieved a constant bearing on that target at seven knots at this particular bearing right here, okay? Which means if the target were going on my course of a 080, it would be going seven knots. But if he's going on maybe a course that's 20 degrees different than this, He's actually going to be going faster than seven knots, which makes sense, right? Because I'm on a, I would be on a collision course with that target. So I can say, yeah, fine. I, my, my, his speed is seven knots here, but uh, if the course is not zero eight zero, he's not going seven knots. He's going something faster than that. So that's what we need to actually d determine right now. So how we're going to do that is we are going to draw a triangle. We're going to do some vector analysis, but we're not going to do it. We're not going to do the analysis yet. We're simply just going to set it up. So, what I like to do is I take my own speed and take my own course. My own course is 081. Speed is seven. So I then I draw a vector of of a length of some multiple of seven. So in this case, I'll just use 70 kilometers. It's close to seven, or it's it's got the, the seven in it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's divisible by by seven there. Okay, so. Um, and I'll go to 081, which is here. Perfect, right there, okay? That's my speed, my vector, speed vector there, okay? The bearing to the target is zero, that's 275, which is 85 degrees from my bow, okay? So 275, but I, I don't need to know that. I just need to know it's 275, and I'm going to use the attack disc. Uh, to, to figure that out. So I slaved it to my course. I set 275 opposite the um, opposite the the, uh, the bearing ring here, 275, and I read the true uh, make sure that's right, 275, and I read the true bearing off here to be about 356. Okay, you see that? 356. So then I come in here, whoops, and I draw, I draw another, um, I'm going to do it with the root, with the, uh, with the, with the compass, I have three, five, six, okay? 
So three, five, six, and I'm going to make this of an indefinite length. Three, five, six. Okay, that's the bearing right there, right? And then I'm actually what I'm going to do is then just going to draw a line. Um, no, not going to do that. So okay, that's the bearing there to the target. This is my speed vector. What we'll do is once we go around him and we figure out what his true course is, we will draw that true course to meet with uh, our uh, the end of our speed of our speed vector here. Okay, so we're gonna say so we'll have a we'll have a line like this. Okay, this represents its course here. All right, so maybe to make it less confusing, I'll flip this around and I'll put the um, and I'll put the uh, the arrow going. The, the point is that the arrow always has to be, the end of it has to be on my speed vector. So if the target were going, and this is, here's a demonstration of it right here. If the target were going on a course of uh, 0, 0.96, the speed would be 7.1. If the target were going on a course of the target we're going on a course of 120 the speed would be 8.3 knots so you can see how that changes so we don't know for sure that the course is 081 we, we're pretty sure because we we look like we've matched its course it wasn't getting any further or closer away but we don't really know that right so if it is 081 well then its line is our line right pretty straightforward so all we need to do now is just keep is keep these two um, these two lines plotted here, our speed vector and the bearing line there. And then we'll, we'll revisit this uh, in, a, in a bit once we get a better appreciation. So now I can pretty confidently say the course is 080, the speed is 7 knots. So I'll go ahead and set that into the TDC now. Can't set the AOB yet, but certainly set the speed. Set it to, zero, to, to 7 knots. Good. Call it good. Okay. All right, so that's that. All right, so now what I do then is accelerate as fast as the boat will permit me and get ahead, okay? So the one thing that's helpful while we're getting ahead is we can make use of the time that our uh, navigator is plotting these five-minute uh, these, these five plots here is to do a rough plot of the target. So just eyeballing that, I know that that target there uh, just based on how the horizon works, or the simulated horizon in SH5 works anyway, that that target right there is at a is about 15 kilometers away. Okay, maybe between 14 and a half and 15 kilometers away when it's hull down like that. Okay, that's that's the how the horizon works with a mass tip like that in SH5. So using that information, uh, once the navigator plots the next one, which he just did, I'll go ahead and put the first plot down. So I know that. Bearing is 27, 274 and a half. All right, so then I get the true bearing from that 274 and a half, which is right about here. The true bearing is 355. Okay, 355. So we'll plot that from our last point 355. Five, five, right there, and then I'll bring it to be uh, about. Let's just call it, a, yeah, about 15, maybe 14.7 or so. Just an eyeballed range. We'll put a mark there. Okay. All right. So that's going to be our. Um, that's going to be our first plot point there, and all we're really trying to do, since we have already a good good handle on its speed and a good handle on its course. We're just trying to figure out where its course line is, where it is in relation to us. This really isn't necessary, uh, but it's helpful uh, later on, you can see, with, with attack planning. So uh, so then all we're going to do then is every five minutes, he's going to plot a point, and we're going to do the same thing. We won't do it all the way until we're in front of him, but we, what we will do is we will um, we'll do it for maybe 15, 20 minutes in game time, and then uh, 
we should have a pretty good handle on it. So at 23 minutes after the hour is when that was plotted, so 28 minutes after the hour will be the next one. So that's going to be in a few minutes. So in the meantime, I will draw what I th what I think is well. We'll hold off on that for now. Okay. So uh, all right. So we're going. We're, we're starting to overhaul the target and put ourselves. What we're going to do is put ourselves directly in front of it at zero AOB and dive. Okay. All right. So let's wait till about eight, and then wait for him to do the next. Now, now he's already got started on the next plot point. So we'll get ready. So now what I'm doing is I'm seeing whether or not he looks like he's uh, come closer or gotten further away just so I can eyeball the range. All right, there is the next plot point. So the bearing is uh, uh, 268. All right, so 268. So we say uh, 268, which is here. True bearing is 349 right here. Okay, 349. All right, so we draw 349. We extend that out to be right there. And then we will move our circle over. And he's probably roughly the same uh, distance or so, I think. Didn't look like he changed by very much. Okay, so then we have that. So that's that'll be our second plot point there. All right, and now we can draw a rough course estimate, which puts him just right around seven, eight, seven, nine, right there. Okay, and then we'll further refine this as he continues to plot. So the next plot will be five minutes from then, which would be would be about twenty-three thirty-three and a half. Okay, so. Uh, we will go ahead and wait again. 33 and a half. One, two. All right, now he started again. We're going to stand by for a bearing and a range. All right, so that's definitely shrunk a little bit again. Not by much, but a little bit. Wait for him to plot. There he is, right there. Grab the bearing. The bearing is 261. So we come to the attack disc. We say, okay, the bearing is 261. The true bearing is, looks like 342. Alright, so 342. Plot that, which is going to be right there. Okay. And then we'll move our circle over right there. He's gotten a little further away, so maybe like right there or so. All right, and we'll put the next plot point down here. All right, so then we can adjust this course a little bit. Okay. All right, so this is where we think he is just based on plotting now. So now we, what we also can do now is get a rough speed. So I'll show you how to do that with the attack disc as well. Uh, we can actually adjust this a little more. Um, well, so we can say, okay, we knew that he was going, he went, um, well, no, we'll, we'll, do, we'll use the nomograph for this. So 1,800 meters in 10 minutes. 1800 meters in 10 minutes, so we say 10 minutes here. Uh, 1800 meters. So this is this is giving us um, uh, that's giving us six knots. Okay. So he might be actually a little further further a little closer than we think he is. This is just trying to get us get a feel for what. Um, for uh, where we think his track is, just as a confirmation. All right, so 33, so about 38 will be the next point. Seven, 38. All right, we'll get ready. 
Oh yeah, you can tell he's definitely shrunk now. He's almost, his funnel is almost down. Okay. There's the next one right there. All right, so the plot point is two, five, four and a half. Two, five, four and a half, which is right about there. This gives me a bearing of three, through, true bearing of three, three, five. All right, so I'll plot three, three, five from here. All right, so that puts me right about there. Okay. All right, so I think we might have been off a little off in this bearing here. Uh, so we will go ahead and put a mark. Whoops, we need to move our circle over. And I can tell that's definitely got further away relative to us, so I can say maybe like, yeah, 15 or so right there. Okay, so then, uh, so that's that there. Okay, so now we can get a different course estimate, or excuse me, speed estimate here. We can say speed was well, the distance he traveled in what what is now 15 minutes. We can confirm that with the plot. So 3150. Okay, how how much time was that over? 2335 and 30 and 39. So that's um, 23. So that's actually 15 and a, and a half. 2335. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's actually 15 and a half. So we'll take that into consideration. So 3150. So 15.5 minutes. Went 3150, which is about called 32. Okay, so seven knots. All right, so that's actually more of what, in line with what we were thinking. Okay, seven knots. All right, so that's probably pretty accurate, a pretty accurate track there. So I think we'll call that good for plotting. We have a generally good idea of what his of what his track is. And I will extend the line out. Um, so about zero eight zero, okay. That. Alright, and then we'll uh, we'll test it out and see how we how we did. Alright, so now at this point, um, I'm going to I'll keep the navigator plotting for us, but then I'm gonna just turn uh, 20 degrees so that he's and I'll just use a lot of time compression at this point so we can get further around him and, and start the attack all right so there he is I'm just gonna get in front of him as quickly as I can here keep the video running though just so you can see how I try to stay uh, roughly around the same distance as I'm running around him I could easily just cut the video and say okay now we're in front but I won't uh, just so you can see because uh, this is also very important right you need to be able to to be able to uh, judge when to turn away and when to turn to again so I'm going to turn actually five degrees to starboard because his <clears throat> I don't like that funnel to be growing too much on the on the horizon there I like to I like for it to pretty much stay right around flush with the horizon so I know A, about how far away I am, and B, I know that I absolutely know that he won't sight me. Alright, so I'm just going to keep running here. Uh, so that's looking good so far. How are we doing on the map here? So you can see we're running around. We can probably turn
so that's like the perfect distance away right there, just at the, keeping the tips just on the horizon the whole time. And you're also just watching to see if he changes course. Now, I know he won't change course because I made this mission, right? But you always are watching to see if somehow the alignment of the mass change or the rate of bearing change changes. You're not, not that you're measuring it or anything like that, but you're, you can definitely tell when the target changes course because something appears to have changed, right? Every once in a while, though, while you're doing this, you can probably just do a quick check. So maybe on the next bearing, once this guy, once he completes his... Uh, plotting this next bearing, or this, excuse me, this next uh, dead reckoning position, we will uh, we'll get another bearing and, and rough range on him and say, uh, just independently, I think that that range is probably uh, it's much further away now. It's over 15. It's over uh, maybe around 15 uh, thousand uh, meters. We'll see here. So one four, uh, but one four five and a half on that one. So let's do one four. Or 245, excuse me, 245 and a half. So that gives me a bearing of about 293. Alright, so bearing of 293. circle up here uh, and I'm gonna yeah I mean 15 or so okay so it's actually further away than that actually further away uh, well, I must have opened the range pretty significantly there so it's yeah okay so that's so I guess yeah 16 probably makes sense actually because he's even his masts are almost gone the funnel is gone now the funnel was visible before and the masts are pretty much all gone now. So, okay, so yeah, that seems that seems appropriate. I made a mistake there, initially thinking it was 15. Uh, 15 is what we were using right around here, uh, and that, that's clearly further away than 15. All right, so, okay, so then one thing also that's good to do is just check the AOB. So, 243 is the bearing there. So, using the attack disc is the easiest thing, so we think the course is 080, so we set that. The bearing is 243, so we set that. And we read off. It should be about AOB of uh, about 31 right now, right? Okay, so, so we're getting there, we're getting closer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, since he's so far away now, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn another 10 degrees in. Now, since I've changed course, I need to reset my his course on the attack disc. Because our course will always be slaved here, as long as we have the switch switched. Well, you'll need to adjust the, his course pointer. Always. Okay, so. So that's good. And we'll continue to watch him. So he'll get a little closer now, now that we turned in a little bit. So what we're, what we're doing is we're, wait, we're waiting for the point at which we are right in front of him. And the reason why we're doing that is because, really twofold, right? First of all, we want to be sure that if the target maneuvers, we'll still be in a position to catch him. Being right in front is the absolute best place to be uh, to prevent that from happening, to prevent a target from, from slipping through your fingers uh, if it changes course. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is it gives us the opportunity to decide what, what um, side of the target we want to attack from. Now, based on where the sun is and based on where he is, I know that I want to attack from his starboard side, so the same side of the target we're on right now. Okay, So we can choose that if we're directly in front of the target. So, um, so that is the advantage of being directly in front. Uh, the third one, and one of the most important reasons, is that it gives us his actual course value. So we can look at his the alignment of his mass from directly ahead, or if we can't see the mass very well, well, we'll just put him on our 180 and see if the bearing changes. The 
bearing doesn't change, then we are, and he's on our 180, well, then we're on his course line. Uh, but I can see the mast is still there, and I can see that they're, um, they're getting more aligned, okay? Alright, so we'll go ahead and just TC a little bit, and then we can check the AOB. Alright, so where is he? He's right there. His bearing is 248 or so. Alright, set to 80 again. 248. is okay AOB is about 14 all right so we're getting he's getting a little further away so I'm gonna actually put us on first of all I'm gonna slow down a little bit uh, actually we'll slow down to about 14 knots okay historically that's two times half speed ahead uh, let's go ahead and just turn perpendicular to him. So that's going to be a course of 350. Or, um, 350, yep. We're going to cross the T, so to speak. Okay, so then this is going to allow us to be. Um, to hopefully see when, his, when he aligns at zero. Okay. And that'll be when it when it starts approaching 270. We know we should be almost at zero, so we'll turn. Once he gets almost to 270, then we'll turn uh, parallel again and see if we've matched his course. And then we can kind of complete the circle there. So, okay. Now we can see him coming. Further, he can be even closer now. His mass are, are aligning very well. Uh, I'm actually going to just turn away by 20 degrees just so that he doesn't close too fast. Well, we determine. So you can see it's very, very sharp, the angle on bow now. At this point, at 255. He's already at like six, which looks to be about right. Okay, so we'll go ahead and wait a little more here. It's almost aligned, almost aligned. Okay, that's getting very close. At this point, we can go ahead and, and uh, match course. Zero, zero, um, zero, eight, zero, and see how we did. Let's have our navigator do a dead reckoning. Oh, he's already plotting one right now. Okay, so hopefully it'll be almost on its course. This is subject to error, by the way, so just know that if you're going to try to do some plotting. Um, it's fairly accurate, but it's it's going to deviate some. Alright, so there is that. Okay, so if this is accurate right here, then our his ranges would have been, his course line was more like this. Okay. Okay, so let's put him on our 180, almost there, that's pretty close, that's close enough, just make sure we're on the course, yep, we're on 080 right now, so we are going to now um, watch the watch the bearing change here and see if it changes at all, and if it doesn't, then we have matched course, well, we should probably uh, actually... Um, adjust our speed down to what we think his is. Okay. Here we go. Roughly. Okay. And now we can watch it. Just so we don't lose sight of him. Alright. So it's moving like ever so slightly to the right. So we can go ahead and just maybe do a two degree bearing change or course change there and then we'll watch it again. It's moving back the other way, so it's actually his course is probably about zero eight one. All right, that's close enough. So it's about zero eight one. The course is about zero eight one. Okay. So what that means then, now that we have his course, we can go back to this triangle we made, and we can complete it. 
Well, we actually don't have much to do because we actually matched its course almost exactly. It was 081. That's what we matched. Okay, so we don't. There's nothing for us to do here because if we draw a line that ends in our at the end of our speed vector of a, in a at a course of 081, it's going to be our line. So his speed is synonymous with our speed there, which was seven knots. So we know we have matched course and speed exactly, uh, and we know that. Um, that the uh, that the data is correct. Okay, we've had multiple checks on it. So now what you can see is happening here is our navigator is now plotting our plot a couple points plot points on our on his course. That's going to be to our advantage as well. We're going to actually draw um, draw a line for that coming back at his course line because we are going to want to know. Going to want to know oops, what his um, what his actual track is. Not absolutely necessary, but it's definitely good to know, handy to know. Right, it's going to be about like this, okay? So his this target is coming up. So our ranges were a little off. You can see the target is going to come is going to be coming up this way, All right? So and if we went back and measured the measured back and did this again, measured the range that he traveled in, so 35, 3500 or so, okay, 3450, and that was over a time span of 15 and a half minutes, you can say, um, about there, 34, just under 35. So about seven knots, you can see. There it is, right? So that that's pretty exact data. What I'm getting at here is you don't need the rec manual, okay? You you can do all of this uh, while you you spend a little time matching course and speed, and then just kick it into high acceleration and and plot like this, and just do a confirmation while you run around the target, uh, and then that's really all you need to do, okay? So if you're in a pinch and you don't you don't have the luxury of starting just directly a beam the target like we did here. Uh, you can do this matching exercise at even smaller AOBs, but you just have to pay attention to whether the range is opening or closing and adjust your speed accordingly. Okay. So I can actually put a uh, there's a link in the um, uh, in the description of the video that has uh, a slide that I made for matching course and speed that kind of walks you through how to do it and what to adjust, you know, adjusting course or adjusting speed or vice versa, depending on where you are relative to the target. All right, so that's that. So then the next step is what side do we want to attack from? Well, a couple considerations. One is the sun. The sun's not very bright. Uh, two is the, the direction of the waves. So if I give, if I have my navigator plot, a, or excuse me, uh, give me a um, weather report, I can see the direction of the wind is for coming, it's coming from zero, 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 and it's only going one meter per second, all right? So it's actually pretty, uh, pretty low. So I don't think this matters in game, but it's kind of cool to sort of simulate it, uh, to say, okay, the wind is coming from zero. That means the wind is coming from that direction there, but it's not very strong. So I'm not, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about making a spray on my scope, um, by going opposite of, opposite the waves, okay? Uh, the sun is coming from this direction here. I want to be attacking out of the sun. I want the lookouts to have trouble seeing my scope uh, when looking in that direction. That, I think, is simulated in the game, okay? Uh, the alternative, if I said, okay, I wanted to... Uh, let's say I wanted to... Um, Let's say I wanted to do a uh, like a stern attack. I could probably opt for uh, this side here, uh, just because uh, my uh, my scope is going to be. Uh, I'm going to be traveling in the direction. That I'm going to be. Uh, excuse me. I, I want to be. I want to attack from this side in either in either case because in this instance because uh, if I wanted to do a stern attack, my my uh, I would be traveling with the sea here, okay, and therefore the scope would be wa or the water would be washing over my scope. I wouldn't be traveling against the sea. 
and I would be traveling, I would be attacking out of the sun. So that would be best case scenario in both worlds. So actually a stern attack would probably make the most sense historically here because I can, my, my, um, my boat would be traveling with the sea, therefore not making much of a wake in the periscope, and it would be attacking out of the sun. I'm not going to worry about that, I'll still do a bow attack, uh, but just kind of for historical context, that's sort of what uh, the considerations were, okay? So, I know I'm right on his line, on his course line right now, so what I can do is I can use that to my advantage also to figure out uh, where, how I want to plan my attack. So, I want to say, okay, I want to attack from, from the south, okay? From this way. I want to put myself a certain distance off of the target's track and I want to run down parallel. So what I want to do is, I, I, I usually say maybe about 1800 meters or so. What, about one nautical mile off the target's track. Or let's call it, let's say 1500, a little less than a nautical mile. Alright, so I make that circle there, alright, and I want to, my navigator is going to plot uh, out to that circle eventually. And that's when I know when he reaches right around that point there, that's when I know I want to turn down parallel. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and let us accelerate to great speed ahead, which is 16. I'm going to go ahead and order a dive to periscope depth. You see me clicking on the speed manually and clicking on the depth manual because I, I know what the values were in real life and I want to always I want to get to those values in the game. Uh, the, e, the engine order telegraph settings on here don't actually give you historical speeds. Uh, okay, so then same thing with depth. It's going to take too shallow, so I order manually 14 meters. Alright, so we are diving now on the target's course line. Uh, I want to uh, I want to execute a turn to turn myself 90 degrees to start heading off of its track. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, whoops, and I can just do the math in my head. I want to turn to a course of 172. All right, that's going to put us 90 degrees uh, to the target's track. All right, and then I'm going to set the speed of about four and a half knots or so. All right. Now I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to see, watch, watch the navigator plot. Okay, now you can see it's starting. There's one plot. There's another plot. All right, we're almost there. Wait a couple more minutes and see. You can even have him do a plot in the interim just to know when you're... Oh, okay, now we're there. All right, so now what I do is then I'm going to start... I'm going to make another 90-degree turn, which is going to be... Um, uh, a 261, okay? So 261. There we go. All right, turn there. Good. Set speed to three knots. And we're going to approach. Okay. All right, that should be good right there. All right, now we can put our scope up. Now we approach the target. What we've done is we've put ourselves about good, you know, distance off the target's tracks, so since we don't want to approach him at zero. Make any sense. And now we're running toward him. We want to attack from the sun side. We're going to be attacking out of the sun. The sun's not very bright, but still. Alright, so... You can see. Now here's another clue, okay? So now we know we're on a parallel course. Parallel but opposite course. If his course is 081, which we know it is, and we're going on an parallel but opposite course, the bearing will always equal the AOB. So we know that his AOB now is about 10, right? Okay? So that gives us a good feel for the situation. Keep your scope pretty much on the waterline, always. And when you get when we get close to the target, uh, have it like this. I mean, so it's just blurry because you don't need you already we already got the data. We don't need to be having the scope way up and getting all the data by using you know fixed wire or whatever. We don't have to do any of that. We will do the fixed wire just based on an estimate of its length, but we don't need to uh, we don't need to be looking anything up in the book. Okay. All right. So here we go. So we're we're approaching. Now there's nothing really for much us to do at this point besides just watch the target and observe. Okay. Uh, the other thing I don't like is the... Uh, I don't like being told when they spot me, so I select that off. Okay. 
All right, so then here we go. All right. Uh, I can also demonstrate a method to uh, the constant bearing method using this triangle here. Whoops. Using a triangle like this, uh, like we were going to do here. Say you say you couldn't get the target speed for whatever reason. There's actually a way, way you can do it underwater as well by just getting a constant bearing. Um, uh, I know uh, uh, Tansi, who's another uh, SH5 player who sort of shares the same uh, ideas that I have about the rec manual, etc. Uh, he has demonstrated a video on this. It's called Ausdampfverfahren. The procedure that I demonstrated is called Ausdampf, matching, of course, in speed. Uh, but Ausdampfen also is getting a constant bearing to the target is really what it means. And then deriving the target speed, or you can even use it as a shooting method like he does in his video. But what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, turn when he's uh, maybe about 30, AOB of about 30. Uh, and I'm going to put him and try to get a constant bearing on him and figure out the speed, okay? We already did this, um, we already did this when we were on the surface. So we don't need to do it, but this, let's just pretend that we didn't get the speed for whatever reason. But we did get the course because we ran around, we ran around to the front and we saw him directly from ahead, from, uh, ahead, okay? Alright, so there we go. So now he's coming up on 20. Let's wait a little while. We can, in fact, matter of fact, let's start turning now. Let's just go right for rudder. And we'll go ahead and see about putting him on a bearing that's going to give us a constant bearing. Okay. Which is going to be probably in the ballpark of about maybe about 300 or so. Let's try that to start with. probably good let's go midships there so now what we do is we we can we'll do another triangle now you can see how this actually works so we'll watch the bearing we we'll pick a pick a reference spot make sure first of all make sure our rudder is centered which it is all right the boat is settled on its course so we're gonna pick uh there's this little tiny kind of king post right there in the middle i'm gonna just put put my scope on that watch okay and I can see the bearing is actually moving forward so we need to adjust we need to adjust our uh, oh I need to get back up to speed first hold on get back up to three knots all right watch it again all right still going forward so we need to I'm gonna change by 20 degrees all right I don't have much time to do this because he's getting close. But this is in a pinch. If you need to, uh, this is what you can do to get speed. All right. Okay, there we go again. He's still moving. So we'll go another 20 degrees. Neuer Kurs, 2, 7, Grad. Neuer Kontakt. Okay. Yeah, so he's even now. So we need to actually, we can't do it anymore with with uh, course changes. We need to do it with speed changes now. Alright, so almost there. Coming up on four knots there. Right there is about right, okay? So we can see. Uh, for, he's still going a little for, bit further, so we'll actually, um, uh, we'll call it, say, 4.5 knots is what we needed to match the bearing. It's still moving a little bit further ahead, okay? But we can just say if we were going another half a knot faster, it probably would be constant, okay? So the bearing is about 274 there, which, which means, um, uh, We'll have to get the true bearing in a second, but basically, okay, say 4.5, so I want to do this on the map, and say this, okay? Our course is 026, our speed is four, would be 4.5, okay? 026, 
at 4.5. 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. 0, 2, 6. Right there. Okay. Now, his bearing is 274. All right, 274, we convert that to true. 274, the true bearing there is 300. Okay, so we draw that. Three hundred of an indefinite length. Okay, now we now we figure out the AOB. We know the we know his course, which is zero eight zero. We already set the bearing, so the the AOB is forty, right? That looks right. Okay, forty right. All right. So meanwhile, I'm going to reduce my speed. Forty right, uh, which means we need to draw the angle. Uh, we also know his course. We could always just do the course. Easier to just do the course, okay? So I'm going to use this so that I can move it, all right, and draw a line at 0, 080, 0, like this, or 0, 081, rather. And now I simply uh, put it so that it intersects the uh, the end of my vector line right there, like this. Now I just adjust it back. The speed. Okay, six, uh, this gives me 6.8, which is pretty close to 7, which is what we what we had figured. Okay, so we'll stick with 7. That's how you figure it out if you can't in a pinch. You just get a constant bearing and then do that triangle. Okay, that's all we're doing there. So now I'm going to figure out the attack course that I want. Okay. Range is going to be pretty good. I've already dropped my speed down. Uh, I'm going to figure out the attack course for what I want to do is I want to shoot. I'm not going to do fast 90. That's not typically what they did. What they did was they shot when the AOB was 90 because it, they can instantly recognize it. It has last final confirmation that AOB is correct. Okay. So I already have it set to 080, which is the target course. I want to say, okay, I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot a G7E torpedo. I'll set it to impact, and then three meters. Okay, I know this torpedo travels 28 knots, so I'm going to quickly just figure out what the lead angle would be. 28 over 90, and then the target speed is 7, so the lead angle is about 14 and a half. Okay, 14 and a half, so then I want to say, okay, I want to lead the target by 14 and a half. So what I say, what I do is I say, um, the uh, let's see, the it's going to be 14 and a half starboard side, which is going to be about here. So I want my course, I want his, the course to be, excuse me, port side or starboard side is right, 14 and a half. Which is right about there. Well, easier to just do this. 10, 14 and a half. So I want my course to be about 004. Zero, zero, okay. Which means that when I uh, when I am at when he is at 90 AOB. Uh, he will be at the point where I shoot. When he's at the point where I'm going to shoot him, his AOB will be 90. It'll be the final check on whether or not we did things, uh, we did the course right. All right, so we'll go ahead and we're going to monitor him, make sure he doesn't blow by us here. Okay, so we already have our torpedo set up. We have not yet set up the uh, the um, CDC. We've got speed in. Uh, range is not going to matter because we're going to shoot at zero gyro. But but as a just as a feel, we could get a feel for it. We could say, okay, uh, he is uh, three three and a half center radians long. He's probably about thirty meters high, so he's just going to be a hair under a thousand. All right. Okay. Good enough. All right. So the course is now zero zero four. We're steady on course. 
Now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, what bearing is he going to be at 90? Uh, he is going to be at 90. The bearing is going to be at 344. So we set to 344. 90, right? That's going to be where we shoot him. Well, uh, I should say... Yeah, 344 is about... Or that's about where we're going to shoot him right there, okay? So there we go. All right, now we just wait. Now we can we can check and say... Let's see, it'll be there. Yeah, about 70 to 80. Okay, about right. So now I'm not going to raise my scope any further than this at this point. Alright, so everything is set up correctly in the TDC. I'm going to put my scope on zero gyro exactly, and that's going to be the point where I shoot. Inst incidentally, it's, almost, it's also the point where he's about 90 AOB. Alright, so that's going to be perfect. You can use that as a check. And you know what? It's going to be pretty much spot on. If anything, it's going to be a little less than 90. A little less than 90. Right there. Not going to matter. At that point, it's not going to make a difference at all. All right. Now, let's hope I'll use the external view, which I normally wouldn't do, but just so we can show. Well, maybe it will be 90. And he will be there. Okay. We won't be able to see the track, I suppose, because it's a G seven E. Actually tried to do this before. <laughs> there he is. There he goes. There he is. Center mass, right there, right where we aimed. Okay. All right. Yep. So there you go. So that's that's basically how a historical attack would have looked. Um, match course and speed. Do some plotting. Maybe get ahead. Get all the way in front to confirm the course turn off the course by a certain distance and uh, and then you've uh, you've you've pretty much got all the uh, all the data you need right there so that is it so hopefully you guys enjoyed that it was a long video I know there's probably a lot of stuff in there but if anything in here uh, doesn't make sense anything that I did with the attack disk uh, I could probably go over I didn't really go over this very well but to figure out the lead angle so what you do is you align the torpedo speed, which is 28 knots, with the AOB at the shot, which we know is going to be 90, like this, okay? And then we read off at the target speed, which was 7, the lead angle here, 14 and a half, okay? And then all we did was we said, okay, um, we want to lead the target by that meaning turn uh, to, a, to a course that was about, four, so that when, once we shot, it was at a 90 AOB. Okay, that's all we did there. So uh, so that's that was, that was that. What we could have done is we said, okay, the AOB is going to be 90. We set uh, 14 right on this little scale right here. We turned to 004. You can see that right there. Okay, so that's how you use the attack. And now we could have, at that point, we could have shut the TDC off and not used it, and just simply shot a straight torpedo, assuming the gyrang was going at zero. That's basically what that is. That's no TDC shooting right there. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you don't have to do that, but you, you basically eliminate all sources of error by doing that. Okay, so uh, that is pretty much that. So I'll wrap this up at this point. Just let me know if anybody has any questions, and uh, I will be uh, happy to address them in the comments. Thanks.